I, I studied art history in college. I went to Northwestern, studied art history, and then didn't know what I was going to do with myself. I was going to work um, at a museum, and that was uh, hard to come by. Um, ultimately, I went to architecture school and practiced architecture for 25 years. Um, loved design, did a lot of drawing as part of my design work, but never really did art sort of that came from within. Um, and then um, more recently after I had um, children, I have 12-year-old um, twins, I uh, stopped working, changed careers a bunch, and um, really decided that I was going to give painting a chance. Um, it was important to me to have a career to be independent, to earn a living, and so I prioritized that. Um, and I always knew there was a very strong creative drive inside, and, and, I, and I utilized my creativity, certainly in my work, but work is, you know, I designed things for clients with their goals in mind, mine were secondary. Um, and so I think once I had kids, I just, thought it was, I thought I had paid my dues and it was time and I had the opportunity to take a little time for myself and see if I could do it. A friend invited me to join a group here in Wellesley called the Wellesley Women Artisans. We're the ones who are responsible for art in the park that happens next to the library um, during Wellesley Wonderful Weekend. Um, and I became very involved with that group even though I wasn't actively making art and we had a Christmas exchange and every year I would um, create pieces, um, you know, if, if 20 people were involved, we, you'd make 20 pieces and we would exchange works. And, and I found that that sort of deadline and push forced me to actually create some things I, I really liked. A few years ago, I decided that it was time to get serious about painting and um, I decided that I would paint portraits. And I really don't know where it came from, except that it seemed like the hardest thing you could do, and so it seemed like the thing I needed to do. I love, I mean, there's been several people whose classes I have enjoyed. Someone who comes to mind is um, Catherine Kehoe, who taught, whose class I took at um, Mass College of Art probably two years ago. I wouldn't say I did the greatest work in her class because I was actually transitioning from acrylic to oil and that had its own challenges. But um, I really admired sort of her rigor and her process and I think that that sort of mentality comes from my days as an architect. I mean architecture school for those who don't know is incredibly rigorous. There's a lot expected, there's a ton of precision, you've got to know your stuff, and you've got to be incredibly creative and be able to justify it. And it's a real, it's a real tough environment. So I think coming from that, um, I appreciated this rigorous teaching um, that Catherine provides. If you're painting with color, basically you should be able to reduce it to a few colors and create the expression and so it's not that you're looking necessarily for you know it's not the edge of my nose it's the shadow created by my smile lines and the the shadow under my nose and the dark nostril that's what's going to create the nose because the color of the nose could just be the white of the canvas every painter i know is on instagram we follow each other we cheer each other on it, it allows you to have a virtual community that's just unmatched. I mean, it's, it's certainly during COVID and, and even before COVID, it's been an incredible resource for me.
I had been working um, towards a library show that is suppo was supposed to be this September at the Wellesley Public Library. My first show, I was very excited. So I was it was going to be called Influencers, and it was all about all these people who, um, who I paint, who I consider personal influencers. And, um, and then I started to sort of expand that notion, and I thought, well, I'm going to do... Um, a new series called Companions, which would be basically more abstract companions to each of the portrait paintings, because I felt like I needed to um, explore color. Like it, it was just a, n a new growth area, and I wanted. So I started doing these stripes, um, well, or just any companion piece that worked with the with the portrait, and they would be cre treated as a diptych then, um, and that was perfect for COVID. But then I think the Black Lives Matter um, movement really hit me at a deeper level, and I had, I had, um, and and just the general um, feeling of the nation was starting to feel a little more depressing, and um, and there was a real shift in my painting, and I no longer felt like I, I could just be painting beautiful stripes, and I had done some, I had done a painting of um, Rosa Parks. I did, had done a painting of Rosa Parks, and Rosa, um, it was just a, a simple portrait of Rosa Parks, but I felt like it needed another layer of complexity. I layered in her arrest number, and then I decided that I wanted to do a, um, a partner piece to that, a companion piece to that. and. The stripes, it just wasn't coming to me as stripes. I started to do a skin color um, analysis, so I did sort of a gradient of white to black skin color, skin tones. It didn't pair with that. It was sort of a standalone piece. Anyways, long story short, the um, the new work is has evolved to be much more political. I'm, I painted the bus that Rosa was on, and, and I'm I'm still working on that. And then I started a painting, a big painting of Brian Stevenson, who is the um, attorney who started the Equal Justice Initiative, and um, paired with him the, my most political um, painting yet, which is um, something called Yellow Mama, which is the electric chair that killed 135, um, executed 135 um, people in Alabama between 1927 when it was built and 2002. And it's just a remarkable story and hopefully image for me because um, it's this chair that has this like affectionate name, Yellow Mama, and it's killed all these people. One of the silver linings of COVID has also been that, you know, it's forced me to just push myself out there and um, the truth is I probably never would have pursued a relationship with the Wellesley Society of Artists, not because I wasn't interested in any of them, just, I don't know, it just hadn't occurred to me. I had this other group, the Wellesley Women Artisans. Um, but then I had the time on my computer, I'm looking at people, I see all the talented, wonderful work being created by this group, and I felt like I need to know these people. I've yet to meet these people. In fact, I've yet to even do anything more than email with them. Um, but I'm thrilled to be a part of it. I realize now, I'm thrilled to have made that connection. And so I think sometimes the slowing down um, brings, brings, you know, un unexpected um, joys. So.